I was at the block yesterday and my neighbour said, hey, you're a bit of a beekeeper. I've got a plumbing nest of bees. Well, it's not really a swarm because it's been there too long. So I don't know, what are they called when they've decided to nest outside? I would still consider it a swarm. Anyway, I thought, well, shit, we better go and rescue him because he wants to spray his trees and that's not going to do the ladies any good. I'm running out of clean stuff to put the ladies in. So I thought, well, this little nuke box, I'll give it a bit of a hurry up. Now, there's a little bit of it stuff out there on the internet about burning boxes to clean up the AFB. Now, this isn't got AFB, this box, so it's not burning to clean that. And if you have got that shit anywhere other than, I think, I think in some states in America, you're allowed to use flamethrowers to clean it up. But most other places in the world, you've got to get it irradiated or you've got to get it burnt and start again. So this box isn't got any AFB in it, which I just thought I'd bring up since there was an episode where we did have that already. So we'll just get our flamethrower cleaned up, get some of this crap off of here and go and catch some girls before they get too jolly hot. Ooh. So we've got a little flamethrower. This is only a little, little version. You can get a great big one that they melt tar with, but that's a bit exciting, I think. That would be a bit exciting. We'll get one that's like this, but it's got a massive great bar on it. <laughs> Oh, I was a bit conservative. Help. I actually used some boss top from to kill the little wax moths as well, but I figure this is going to get rid of any residual eggs and anything else that's in here. So hopefully the ladies will have a good of a head start. Of, what do they call that? A bit of blowback. It's almost steady smoking now. It's a bit like Clint Eastwood when he finished shooting everybody in those Western movies. <laughs> I was just thinking there was a scene in the Paul Hogan show, which was a funny little show I used to watch as a lad. I bet you that's on bloody YouTube somewhere too. He had one of these flamethrowers and he nailed bread to the bloody wall in his kitchen and he was making toast. <laughs> and I was just thinking that was a classic scene. Anyway, on we go and see if we can rescue some ladies before they get sprayed. Now that looks like fun, doesn't it? <laughs> oh dear, I think we need a pair of snips. What do you reckon? A pair of snips and some sort of bow ladder. Maybe we just go down the pub. Ah, oh, hell. I think we'll just borrow one of these ladders. That'll be long enough. Well, if you're wondering what these are, they're bow ladders, which is what they lean up against the citrus trees when they're picking the fruit. Phew, hell, I did a few years of that. Good God. <laughs> as crazy as beekeeping is, it's better than orange picking. To be rescued. To be or not to be, that is the question. <laughs> Apparently the owner tried to get the picker to pick a <laughs> tried to get the pickers to pick around this bee bee swarm and they said not bloody lightly, but I reckon they did pretty good. They got most of the tree. <laughs> Just the bit that was underneath it was a bit ambitious. <laughs> I'm gonna go up and that and that. Oh god, I'm getting too old for this shit. <laughs> anyway, I can't be letting the girls get in trouble, so off we go. Hey, what am I going to do? I guess I'll just, do you reckon I'll risk trimming? I'll go up there and trim a little bit without my suit on because it's a bit jolly hot and I'll see, see what happens. <laughs> That's is slightly less messed up than when we were hitting that hive out of the tree with a bucket. <laughs> that was a bit crazy. Hello chicks, what's going on? Ah. <laughs> where, are we, where, are we, where are we going here? That freaked me out. That was a fly in my ear. I think this might be a bit silly. Go oh, no. Go and get him. <laughs> go hell. Ah, you chicks have been here for a while, I reckon. I mean, I'll just snip that off there and we'll go and get dressed. Oh, oh crap. So I'm thinking we'll get the pot and we'll just chop the branch off and drop the whole bloom thing in the pot and then we'll figure it out. <laughs> what do you reckon? 
It's not quite as crazy as that one in the doorway, at least. <laughs> oh, no. if we can just pop this in here for a minute. Now hopefully we'll be able to cut this branch back here and we'll have the whole nest together and we'll put them in the box then we'll take the box down there and then we'll happily put them in the newt box and then I'm thinking I'm going to sit it back up here for a little bit but it well, depends where they or well, depends how they feel about it when we stick them in the newt box. See what we can do here shall we? I hope the whole thing's just going to come down in one nice big bit. But that'd almost be too easy, wouldn't it, if it actually went to plan? Cool. Oh, it's Gerald. Sorry. <laughs> Bloody hell. I shouldn't have pulled my foot up here, I didn't realise it was going to be that bloody good. <laughs> oh. They're pretty bloody stable, aren't they, these blooming things? So we'll just sit it down here for a minute. Just hooked myself with the, one of the saw blades, I think. Just as well I wasn't using a chainsaw, I would have taken my bloody arm off. Anyway, we'll pop them in the pot here. Just sit them there like that for a minute. I'll get me smoker and me snips, and we'll try and figure out which bits we can rescue. Ow! So I think we'll just trim some of this mess out of the way so we can get to where we want to get to. I'm just noticing up in the tree all the all the field bees have come back and gone, my lord, I'm sure this was where we were. They obviously didn't find themselves a decent home, so they just decided to stay out in the open. That isn't normally what happens, they used to usually like to hide somewhere. So hopefully that they're not too anti being inside the home. They might get into this box and go, Are you shitting me? Where's the view? We had a lovely view of that bear paddock out there. Oh my goodness, where are we going to start to pull this thing to bits? I reckon we might try turning it up the other way. We'll trim all this off and then I think we'll turn it up the other way and see if we can start dismantling it. Anybody for a waxed orange? Guess if you polish that up it'll look all really good. I reckon we'll turn it over and see what we think. I don't really know what's the best approach. But I think we'll go this way. We'll see if we can't find someone that's in charge. We'll just take this little bit of more shrapnel out the way. They don't seem too angry at least. Hopefully they'll appreciate being rescued. Nothing else, we've got some natural honeycomb. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's been 40 degrees here for the last couple of weeks. It's really amazing they're still alive. I only said they were a bit, bit more enthusiastic before all that heat wave. But still, anyway, there's quite a lot out on the wing. So hopefully we'll just put them together, get the boss in here. And then I think we might put them back up in that tree so they can re go back to that spot and then we'll move them sometime later on. We'll start from the least populated part of the whole exercise because there's a bit of brood nest in there, but I don't know, I think they're I think they've been doing it pretty jolly tough. They've all run down the bottom, which is good. So hopefully. Mind you, we've got to cut around the blooming tree. I think Mrs. Bush Bee Man will make some use of this cool blooming honeycomb. Well that'll be all natural. So we're getting close to where the brood is. Look, there's a little bit of brood there. Well, yeah, it's like it's like brain surgery. Well, maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not quite that good. Imagine that, I don't think I'd ever get a job as a surgeon. Can you imagine it? Who's operating today? Oh, I don't know. I think it's that bloke in a white suit. What do they call him? The Bush Bee Man? I think he's, he's brought his pocket knife and he's hacking into you. Goodness me. <laughs> don't think I'd be in the profession long, would I? Have a look at that. They build around that stick. How cool is that? Because obviously that stick would have been wiggling in the tree, so they haven't actually utilised it. How bloody clever are they, honestly? But I think they've been having a bit of a hard time. So they I mean, haven't, with that jolly heat. Although, hang on, there's a bit more back here. Well, who knows? Who knows what's going on? We'll find something for them anyway. They definitely haven't got too much honey. Hopefully, she'll end up in the bottom of this bucket. 
and not be too distressed. You know, they don't seem, I don't know. I guess they're all the angry ones up there. <laughs> we'll find out. Well, there's definitely an active queen because you can see the little, new little larvae laying here. So they're, they're obviously finding a bit of something for the food. Hell, they're ambitious mob, aren't they? <laughs> there's a little bit of nectar, so something's going on. Actually, there's quite an ice brood pattern behind this panel. Let's see what we got here. Oh, they're all around the orange again. Oh, hell, they've built around everything. They're kind of cool, isn't it? <laughs> Just pop them lot in there. Hopefully, if we get some rubber bands, and we'll sit this all on here, and the girls can figure it all out later on. They're like, what the bloody hell's going on? We had ourselves all organised in this lovely orange tree. And have honey and orange juice for breakfast. <laughs> I don't know, does that go together, honey and orange juice? Would that be something you could have? No, they didn't. Silly. Cool thing about rubber bands is it's nice and easy and quick, and they dig up, they break down, and the girls just take them out of the box themselves. So that's pretty cool. A lot better and quicker than the fishing line idea I started off with, or the bit of string or whatever the hell else it was that I was trying to do. It'll work. We'll pop that in the middle. And we'll get this one and we'll get organised. Look at that nice bit of pattern. They've been very busy, except we've got a jolly branch running straight through the guts of it. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I reckon that's the last little bit that we'd, so we better not lose that bit. Oh no, there's some more down here. Just now they're going to go around the weird ass corner, aren't they? Where are we going to go? That's the other bit there, so we'll try to get that up of there. And we'll have that bit. That looks pretty good. Considering the arduous conditions they've been living out, I think they've been out here since spring, so they were saying, so the guy was telling me. So he was probably hoping they'll move on, but they get to this point, they're not going anywhere. They've, they've established themselves. So we'll save them from a fate worse than death. I think that branch was just running through the whole middle of it. So we might just chop this out of the way too, so we don't bang ourselves. I'm just wondering where the boss is, but I'm pretty sure she would be down in the bottom here somewhere. We're just going to want to be really careful once we get this brood out of here, which is the main nest. Because I would think, being a typical queen, she'd be running down there hiding from us. So we don't want to lose her. Is that all one thing? What's that doing? Look at that nice nectar there. What's going on? It's a friggin' earthquake. There's some nice little larvae in there too. So I reckon that's about all of the brood nests that we're going to want. So we'll just put that in the middle and then we'll be trying to find out where Her Majesty is hiding in the bottom of this pot. That'll be fun. What's that? That's a game of hide and seek, isn't it? I wonder what that would be called in the bee world, hide and go seek. The other day, I had a frame out of a box that had, hadn't done so well. They must have lost their queen or something, and they still had a bit of brood left. And I thought, oh, well, and I put it in the back of the ute and brought it home. And I went out the next, I think, I, I don't know, it was over the weekend, so I went out there a couple of days later, and the Blooming bit of brood that was in there had hatched out, and then there was like, I don't know, probably 30 bees in a little cluster that were all little baby bees. They were all running around and they just hatched out by themselves because they're obviously, to this point, they're already properly matured up. Oh, that was pretty cool. So it goes to show how hardy they are when they're actually capped off. Now yeah, for the fun part. Put this, at least we've got two together so they'll have enough to play with. Now I've told you before, when you make sure you put your frames in, make sure you put that part. To that so you've got that front that's sticking out this doesn't matter so much because you've only got two frames but try to put them in so you've actually because you've got them on the front of your frame and not actually in the frame you want to face them protrude is it protruding the protruding part all in the same direction because I mean we've totally disturbed them anyway we'll get rid of some of these extra bits that are in the box a little cricket ball they actually make me look like a giant, wouldn't it? Ooh. <laughs> I think they know we're here to help them because they haven't even tried to attack us. They like going, yes, yes, look at that. We're finally going to have a home. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Just see if we can't see her boss. See the boss. Well, I don't think we're going to find her somehow just that easy. But she'll be in here somewhere. What have we done, chicks? We have got stuff everywhere. Can we try and just shake them off of here, you think? Mm. 
that got him a bit excited. I figure we'll get all this extra wax comb and bits and pieces that they're not using. And then when they cluster up again, we'll shake a few more into the box. And then we're going to stick them back up where they used to be. And hopefully, tomorrow morning, we'll grab them and take them to a new place. Because obviously they can't live up the tree even if they are in a box. I just don't want all that crap in the... And tip it into the nuke. Don't need that. I reckon, by the sound of that tone, I don't know if you can, whether how good this new microphone is, but when we shook that last big cluster in there, the tone in there changed from what was in here. So hopefully, hopefully the boss woman's actually in there. And they actually, if you, if you came around the back here, she's probably up this corner because they're all clustering to this edge. And the good thing about it, when they're a nest like this, which is technically still a swarm, that she can't fly anymore. So you don't have to worry about it. Well, sorry, you do have to worry about it, but you don't have to worry about her actually flying away. I think she might have been actually on that frame just then. Come on, everybody, get off the lid. Cut off, cut off, cut off. Be free! No, don't be too free. <laughs> it's not be freed, it's be rescued. Oh my goodness me, the things we do. Well, they're that friendly, I probably could have done it without my suit on, but then I wonder, I sometimes wonder when you don't have your bee suit on, you get a little bit more nervous, and then I figure they can, they can sense the nerves, I reckon. Well, I reckon we've got them all off of there. So now the plan is, we've got a few bees left in here. I'm just gonna double check that the boss didn't manage to land in here. I'm pretty sure she's actually already in the box there. And then if you have a look up where they actually were living, They've made a really big cluster up there, so we're going to have to put the box back up there somehow. And that'll be entertainment, won't it? Especially if we come back tomorrow morning and then they've all decided to bugger off back out of the box and back to the tree. That'll suck. <laughs> and she's freaking out, so she'll be hiding up there. If she is in here. Tip these few nearest bees in. Put our frames in. Hopefully they're thinking they've actually been saved. The fun part's going to be sitting this up in the tree. <laughs> Isn't it? Less deaths the better. You're in short supply you are. I'm going to try and put this box up in the tree. <laughs> but I'm just going to go up there and see where I might put it first. <laughs> that will be bloody interesting. Oh shit. And I reckon the nice little fork there will just sit the box in there I reckon. Of course, we don't want to lose all these lovely field bees, so we'll sit the box back up here and that'll be tomorrow's fun. So I just thought we'd put our blooming hive lock on it, just so it just in case we get a windy night, or heaven forbid it rolls out of the tree, that'd be great, wouldn't it? At least the jolly lid will stay on. I don't plan to leave it here very long, but this, and it might be a lot safer to carry it up there too, what's more. If I fall off, that'll be crazy. Don't we just sit it on the edge of the ladder? That's how it works. How's that for a plan? Ah, dear idea. You think that will fall off of there? <laughs> Welcome to your new home, they said. Oh, look at it. Someone's been building on. I think that looks pretty successful so far. If I can get down without it falling down the tree on top of my head. Climbing back up there in the dark could be fun too. Oh, remember to bring a torch. <laughs> well, even if I do say so myself, I think that was rather successful. That was a shitload better than when we started out rescuing bees. 